Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our off-grid power station. Many people today are becoming self-sufficient with their energy needs, but with so many conflicting opinions out there and choices of equipment, it's hard to know where to get started. So today I'm going to share with you my top tips to get you started on the right foot and help you avoid some of the common mistakes many people make. Becoming self-sufficient with your domestic energy doesn't start with solar panels or inverters. It starts right here with your domestic energy bill. The first thing you need to find out is how much energy you use in a 24-hour period. To do this, you take the number of units you've used divided by the number of days in the billing period. This will tell you the minimum amount of storage you're going to need in the form of batteries. Step number two is to look at your appliances and your daily routines to find out how much continuous power you need to supply to the building at any one time. To do this is quite easy, like with the washing machine here, every appliance will have a label on it telling you the continuous power usage it requires. Knowing your own daily routines and how many of those appliances you're going to have on at the same time will tell you how many solar panels you're going to need and what size of an inverter you're going to need in kilowatts of output. For example, our energy usage here is 13 kilowatt hours per 24 hour period. However, at peak times of the day, like maybe cooking dinner, washing machine on, couple of appliances on at the same time, even the electric shower, we might pull as much as 10 kilowatts continuously for brief periods of time. And that's why the 11 kilowatt inverter here is just about big enough to cover those loads. And you'll need to consider this when you're buying your equipment. By far, the best piece of advice you'll get is to buy big and buy once. If you start with smaller equipment, Later on down the line, you're gonna to have to eventually replace it with bigger stuff, meaning you're buying the same thing twice. Ultimately, you are gonna to have to do just a little bit of learning, nothing too in depth, but just enough to make sure that you get equipment that's compatible with each other and will suit your domestic energy needs. Don't be afraid to spend extra time shopping around for the best equipment you can get at the best price. For example, three weeks after we bought 20 of these 170 watt panels, the prices came down and instead, we could have got 20 of these 455 watt bifacial end type panels currently retailing here in Ireland for 83 euros each, including the VAT. These are the panels that I would recommend buying today, and you're going to see a lot more of these on our channel in the future. So you follow those first few steps, you picked out the best equipment, and now it comes to installation. While many people out there do have the knowledge and skill set to safely assemble and install your off-grid power system, you might not be one of them. And that means you're going to have to hire a contractor and that's where it gets tricky. So while any competent certified electrician can install your inverter and your batteries for you, they might not be too keen to climb up on your roof to fit your solar panels. And that's where a solar installation company comes in. However, they may not be willing to install brands of equipment that they're not familiar with. They might try to railroad you into alternatives or worse, going grid tied. And this is where you'll face your biggest temptation. With the cost of equipment adding up so much, it's easy to be tempted to seek financial aid in the form of government grants, but it's essential that you're fully informed as to the terms and conditions of those grants. For example, here in Ireland at the moment, you can get up to 1,800 euros towards equipment and installation. However, you have to have an up-to-date BER cert, which if you're renovating or you've lived there for a while, you may not have. Your system will have to be grid tied with an NC6 form submitted only by the solar uh, installer, a registered solar company. And worst of all, you're limited to production of only five kilowatts. To put that into context, that's the same as having the oven here and two of the hot plates on at the same time. It's barely enough to cook your dinner. The worst part about that, guys, is that building an off-grid system like we run here and having your freedom will cost you the exact same as building a grid-tied system where your hands are tied. So how do you isolate your property from the mains and run your off-grid system through the existing building's wiring? A lot simple, but one of these. It's called a changeover switch. That's the 63 amp version. On one side of that, you've got your off-grid system. On the other side of that is the old traditional mains. The wire comes up out of that into your consumer unit or your fuse box powers the rest of your house as normal. You will have to hire a certified registered electrician to fit that for you, just to keep your home insurance valid. And for full transparency, let's go through those costs. The 11 kilowatt inverter here, currently on the market at 1,670 euros. 
and you can buy them now under a different brand name for around a thousand euros. The 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage with built-in fire suppressors and all the bells and whistles, that was 3690 for the two of them. 5.7 kilowatts of solar panels, 3200. And at today's prices, you could buy a more powerful system for roughly half that cost. Plus the accessories, wiring, connectors, they were about 500. And the changeover switch, which has to be fitted by a Recce certified electrician, isolating the property from the mains, was 600. The total cost then, not including the wind turbine, is 9,650 euros. And seeing as how this has also now reduced in price by 50%, combined with reducing panel prices, I bet you you could get the whole system today for that price. So with the cost of a safe, reliable off-grid power system being roughly about the same as a grid-tied one, and the average household energy bill being around 2,400 euros, that means that the system is cost-neutral in five years, and you have free, unlimited energy for life. So the best advice for somebody starting their off-grid journey today is these three points. Buy big, buy once. Make sure you get the biggest equipment and don't buy small stuff that you're going to have to upgrade and spend more money on in the very near future. Second of all, don't be afraid to shop around for that equipment. Make sure you're getting the best value for your money and something that's going to serve you for years to come. And third of all, don't be afraid to shop around when it comes to contractors and installers. If they won't do what you want them to do, move on to the next. And guys, there is plenty of companies out there that will do off-grid systems for you. You just have to find them and sit down and have a good old chat with them. So I hope this information helps you to get your off-grid journey started in the best way possible. But now I have to ask something of you that I've never had to ask before. Since we started showing how modern off-grid living can be done and easily achievable, and how other people around the country are also doing it, YouTube has started suppressing our content by a whopping 64%, effectively shadow banning most of our videos. So what I would ask of you guys is, if you found this or any of our other videos useful, just to share them on your social media, share them amongst your friends, your family, or other people you know who might find it useful and help us get through that shadow ban. It would be very much appreciated and thank you so much. I hope you found this video useful. Do take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next one.